Hello and welcome everyone, I have now completed the Harbinger title included with the Shadowkeep DLC, which means I get to make one big complete guide on how to get it, which I love doing, so I'm excited. It's been a few months since my last title guide, which was for Shadow in Season 7, and if you're new to the channel or not familiar with how the seal badge guides work, basically I go over every triumph in that seal and how to do it, and explain how to collect every item needed for the badge. In addition to that, I try to make this a collection of all the guides that myself and others have released throughout the season, so that you can use this as I guess your one-stop shop for Shadowkeep. That means for pretty much everything I'm talking about, there's going to be a guide in the description that will help you get that required item. One downside to these title guide videos is they tend not to age too well the further you get from the DLC's release, and this is because oftentimes Bungie will go back and make adjustments or improvements to the way you obtain certain items, for example the way you earn the Black Armory Forge emblems and the way you even access the forges now is completely different from when that content launched. What I'm trying to say is just keep an eye out for any changes to stuff within the seal and the badge, and I'll try to link any updates in the description. So I usually start with the collections badge and save the objectives in the seal until the very end, but because the seal has a lot of triumphs tied directly to badge items, I'll be mentioning the triumphs as we go along. The Lunar Rover badge is comprised of 30 items and there's one of every kind here. To make things simple, I've listed the order in which I'm going to cover the badge in in the description. Starting with the Dreambane armor set from the moon, your first set is earned throughout the Shadowkeep story by completing missions and acquiring the quests that give you the armor. By doing activities around the moon, you can get these essence quests for each armor piece to drop and refarm them if you'd like. For your first clear of the dungeon each week, you'll be rewarded with a fully masterworked piece of Dreambane armor from the final chest. Unfortunately for most of the Dreambane items, they roll with low stats, so if you end up wanting to get rid of it, make sure to dismantle it instead of infusing it because you'll get high-end materials like enhancement cores and enhancement prisms that can be used to upgrade your better armor. As has been the case for the previous collection badges, you only need to collect a full Dreambane armor set for one character to qualify for the title, not all three. There are 10 Nightmare Essence weapons that you'll need to collect, and they drop from a variety of sources such as the Lectern of Enchantment Weekly Challenge, the Eris Morn Weekly Challenge, the Weekly Replayable Shadowkeep Story Mission, the powerful drops from the Nightmare Hunts, from the first and third encounters in the dungeon, and they can also be obtained through their respective Essence quests. These essence quests are found mostly through just opening chests and completing activities on the moon, but can also be earned by grinding nightmare hunts themselves. Each nightmare hunt has a specific name, whether it be anguish, pride, rage, etc., and the name of the nightmare hunt corresponds to the essence quest, so judging by which nightmare hunts are active that week since they rotate weekly, you can determine which weapons or armor pieces are available to farm. And once one drops for you, you'll be able to rebuy that quest from the Lectern of Enchantment for a Phantasmal Core. These essence quests are not account wide, however, so if you unlock a submachine gun on your Hunter, you're going to have to do it again on your Titan. Each quest has you complete a few simple objectives, and then you'll have to retrieve a specific item in order to craft that weapon or armor piece. In the description, I have a playlist of super short videos that show you all the locations for every item needed for all of the available essence quests. These items only need to be acquired once, and then you'll never have to worry about them again when grinding these quests, unless you switch to another character. As I'm writing this script, the Essence of Envy quest for the Pulse Rifle has not yet been revealed, however you can still earn the weapon from the dungeon's third encounter, Chamber of Suffering, and from the Lectern of Enchantment weekly challenge. Completing Eris Morn's weekly Slow Wave Disruption bounty will grant you a Hymn of Desecration. Once consumed, this increases your chances for a weapon drop during the first and third encounters of the dungeon, so make sure to use that when you're running it if you're still looking for the pulse. There's also three additional weapons you'll need to earn to fill out this badge. Those are the shotgun called Blasphemer, a sniper rifle called Apostate, and a rocket launcher called Heretic. In Sorrow's Harbor on the Moon, there is an Escalation Protocol style horde mode event with three nightmare bosses that rotate daily, always in the same order. Each of the three available weapons are tied to a specific boss, and so that means the weapons also rotate daily themselves. The Nightmare of Fogoth drops the shotgun, and then it rotates to the Nightmare of Tanix, which drops the sniper rifle, and finally it rotates to the Nightmare of Zydron, which drops the rocket launcher, and then the order repeats. 
If you successfully complete tier 5 of the activity and kill the boss without letting too many nightmares sacrifice, you are pretty much guaranteed a weapon drop, although it is possible for them to drop from the chest after failing the boss round. Failing to kill the boss because of too many sacrifices basically knocks you down to the last tier, which is tier 5. This means you have a chance to redo that tier and then face the boss again instead of repeating the entire activity. But if too many players leave and it's not worth trying again, if you go to the next altar after failing the boss and just let the time run out, you'll be greeted by a chest which has a lower drop rate but you still have a pretty good shot at getting the weapon. The Altar of Sorrow's weapons also have a very, very rare chance to drop as their curated versions, which I didn't even know existed until about my 40th final boss kill. There are also two exotic quests included within the Lunar Rover badge. The first is Deathbringer, the exotic rocket launcher. To begin this quest line, you'll have to complete the Lunar Spelunker bounty from Eris Morn, and at the end of the K1 Revelations Lost Sector in Sorrow's Harbor, you'll have to unlock this secret vault and interact with the console inside. This begins the first memory quest, and once you complete it and hand in the necklace to Eris Morn, you get the first real step of the exotic quest. Fully completing the quest for Deathbringer awards the Symphony of Death Triumph in the Shadowkeep Seal. Xenophage is the exotic machine gun that is also required for the badge. To start this, you'll need to interact with the statues in the Enduring Abyss location that can be accessed through the portal near Eris. Unlike the Deathbringer quest, there is no triumph tied to this one. There are two shaders needed for the badge. The first is the Lunar Halcyon Guilt shader. To get this, you'll need to clear a nightmare hunt on master difficulty without dying. Your entire team doesn't actually have to go flawless though, it only matters whether or not you die. So as long as you can make it through a 980 nightmare hunt without you dying yourself, you'll get the triumph in the seal called Flawless Master Nightmare Hunt, and claiming it rewards you with the shader. The second one is the Lunar Gloom Shader, which is earned by giving a small rice cake consumable to all nine rabbit statues on the moon. Despite what I originally said in my statue guide, these consumables can drop more than once per week, mainly if you have other characters to play on. These rice cake consumables drop from doing pretty much anything on the moon such as collecting materials and opening chests, and they can also drop from activities themselves. After turning in a rice cake to all nine rabbits, you should head to the rabbit trophy room and interact with the statue that's laying on the ground. This is actually how you get the shader, it doesn't come from claiming the triumph. One very important thing to note is that the rabbits are not tracked account wide, meaning you should turn in all the rice cakes you get on one character. There are three emblems in the badge, the first is the Sybil's Dream emblem. To get this, you'll have to beat eight time trial runs of Nightmare Hunts on Master, one for each of the eight unique missions. We don't know the exact times for every Nightmare Hunt because for some reason the Triumph never tells you, but we do have some rough estimates right now provided by a familiar face in the Destiny community, Neris. He's been collecting data from everyone to try and put together a list for each Nightmare Hunt. Like I said, it is a rough estimate, so I would recommend trying to be quicker than any of the times shown on this list. I can say for certain though that the Crota time trial is accurate, and it is the most difficult one at 15 minutes. I do have a guide below on how you can beat that one. The others, however, are nothing special. You just have to go in with a coordinated team and blast through the enemies quickly. Completing all 8 time trials on 980 difficulty unlocks the Time Trial Master Triumph, which rewards the emblem. The second emblem is the Lunar Memoriam, which is earned once you find the final dead ghost on the moon. Upon finishing the Shadowkeep story and reaching 900 power, you're going to start earning Lost Ghost Trace consumables from activities on the moon, such as Tolan Patrols, which is where I got most of mine from. These ghost traces can be traded into Eris to purchase the lost dead ghost bounty things, which sends you on a hunt across the moon to find the dead ghosts. Because I completed all 9 pretty early on in the DLC, I had to wait until the 10th one was released with the dungeon, 
But if you're doing these now, you may see all 10 available to you right away. However, if you don't, you should complete the quest The Deepening from Eris Morn, which will grant you access to the Pit of Heresy dungeon, and from there you should see the Ghost of Omar Aga, or the Tenth Ghost, available to purchase. If it's still not showing up, you might have to purchase and then find all nine previous ghosts, and then wait until the weekly reset, although don't quote me on that. Collecting the first nine unlocks the triumph Luna's Lost are found, but the one you need for the seal is called Lost No More, which has you collect the tenth and final ghost within the Pit of Heresy dungeon. Speaking of the dungeon, you'll need to complete a successful run through it to earn the emblem Sanguine Static. But that's not all. You'll also have to complete a run of the dungeon solo, without leaving, like all in one go, to unlock the Triumph Usurper. On top of this, you'll also need to complete a run through the dungeon without dying, which unlocks the Triumph Eternal Heretic. Like with the Flawless Nightmare Hunts, it doesn't matter if your teammates die as long as you don't. The Solo and the Flawless can be done in the same run or separate runs, it doesn't matter, but both are needed to complete the seal. Now we get to the Cosmetics, aka the Ships, the Sparrows, and the Ghosts. The first one you'll need for the badge is the Moonshot Shell. This is earned from the Triumph Wandering Nightmares, where you have to go around the moon and kill a specific nightmare or group of nightmares each week. There are four needed for the Triumph, and they rotate weekly, always in the same order. Just a reminder again, the guides for this and everything else I'm talking about can be found in the description. The moon ship called the Third Tide is earned through the Altar of Sorrow, Sorrow's Bane Triumph, which has you defeat a tier 5 boss without letting a single nightmare sacrifice. The final boss round is arguably the hardest one to stop the nightmares from sacrificing during, so to make things a little bit easier, our team split up 3 left and 3 right to take care of the left and right nightmares first, since the middle nightmares during the boss actually spawn in a little bit later but you could also split up two to the right, two to the left, and two in the middle, so that the middle nightmares are slowed down as soon as they spawn. It's also helpful to equip the Shadowkeep mod Supreme Nightmare Banisher for extra super damage against the boss. The Moon Rider 1 Sparrow is earned after you complete the fifth and final Eris Morn memory quest. To access the first one, you'll need to complete the Lunar Spelunker bounty from Eris Morn, and at the very end of the K1 Revelations Lost Sector in Sorrow's Harbor, you have to unlock this secret vault and interact with the console inside to start the quest. To my knowledge, you can only earn one of these quests per week since that's how they unfolded when the DLC first went live. So if you complete the memory quest of Saimota this week, the next one should be available to you after the weekly reset. So after a total of 5 weeks of memory quests and opening the chest at the end of the Eris Morn interaction, you will get the Moonrider Sparrow. There's a playlist of guides for those memory quests in the description as well. So those three cosmetic items that I just mentioned are all tied to Triumphs, and that's a far better system than how cosmetics worked in the Cursebreaker or Rivensbane title, because it means you have a clear path to grind for said cosmetic. However, Bungie decided to take us back to square one again by introducing cosmetics that can only be acquired exclusively through pure RNG. Those are the Pit of Heresy dungeon ship called Bane of Tyrants, which has a chance to drop from the final chest after killing Zolmak, and the Altar of Sorrow's Ghost, the Bane of Crotoshell, which is hidden in the badge at first and has a chance to drop from the tier 5 chest after killing the final boss. This is easily the worst part of the title and will be the worst part of the Shadowkeep experience for any collectors or title enthusiasts out there. It was pretty much universally agreed upon that the worst part of the Forsaken titles was the cosmetics tied to RNG, and so this issue was solved by tying cosmetics to triumphs, which they already did in this title. But lo and behold, we have two cosmetics that are held hostage by RNG, probably to try and extend the relevancy of their respective activities, which is just a terrible design all around, especially when that item is required for something like a title. Maybe I wouldn't have minded so much if they were high quality cosmetics though. To get the ghost, it took me 45 successful tier 5 boss kills in Altar of Sorrows. I ran the activity with someone who had 93 boss kills and no ghost, and I've heard of people having in the hundreds and still not getting it. The worst thing about this grind is not that I had to put in 45 runs of this event, but that people, possibly even you, will have to put in double 
or triple or even more than that just to get a single cosmetic. Same with a dungeon ship, a grind that is completely disproportionate to the grind of any other aspect of the title. Now for what it's worth, these cosmetics are farmable, so unlike the Dreaming City ones, you have a chance to get them more than once per week. And yes, that alleviates some of the frustration, but it doesn't mean you're going to have a better shot at them, nor does it mean your chances of getting them actually increases. If you're looking to farm the dungeon ship, make sure you save the final boss checkpoint on one of your characters so that you can keep farming the checkpoint by switching characters, loading everyone in, and then switching back again. Luckily, it only took me about 8 or 9 runs of farming, which was on top of the 9 runs I did previously, so close to 20 runs for my ship. But I know some people who are looking at 30, 40 plus clears of the final boss and still don't have it. For Altar of Sorrows, your best bet is trying to get into a lobby with two other random players and get them to invite two people each, either from their friends list or LFG, in order to make one big lobby which you can rotate people in and out of. Trying to set up a lobby like this in the first place can be as frustrating as farming for the ghost itself, but trust me, setting up a group of 9 players to farm this event will make it so much easier than relying on loading into an area with that many players. For 95% of the title, I actually really enjoyed the grind. The quests were fun, the weapons were awesome, I enjoyed collecting things like the ghosts and the rabbits, and I love that things like soloing the dungeon were actually required because a title should be challenging. But the whole RNG cosmetic thing not only gave me PTSD from Cursebreaker, but after finally getting lucky with the slot machine loot drops, it really left me with a sour taste after what I thought was a fun title grind up until that point. Hopefully you are much luckier than me and can snag these items in just a few runs. If not, just keep working towards it slowly but surely, do a few runs of the altar a day. This title is not going anywhere like the Undying one, so you have all the time in the world to complete this. One final reminder, just make sure to check the description for all the guides that I talked about here. And with that, thank you very much for watching everyone, and good luck on getting Harbinger.